Good morning and welcome to The Current. We are glad that you are here today. Why don't you take a moment, turn, say hello to somebody that you haven't met, then maybe somebody that you have, wish them a Merry Christmas, and then you can go ahead and have a seat. Good morning, my name is Grant Lozowitz and I'm a member here at Mumsy and I'm happy to be with you today. Um, in a little bit, Pastor Brian will be talking about our waiting in our series, what it's, what it's really all about, Advent series, in just a few minutes. But before then, when everyone came in, you received a program. Go ahead and grab that now and inside the program you'll find your current connection card. They look like this. If you're a member here, or regular attender here at Mumsy, we just ask that you fill out your name and email address um, so they can get in touch with you. Now, on the front of the card, you'll see this box. Go ahead and mark which box is appropriate. First-time guest, second-time guest, regular attender or member, whichever is appropriate for you. If you're a first-time guest with us today, welcome. Uh, we're honored that you're here today. Please fill out as much information on that connection card as you feel comfortable sharing. Uh, that way we can follow up with you within the next week or so. Uh, hang on to these because you'll have the opportunity to put them in the offering plate as it goes around towards the end of the service. Um, on your connection card, you'll see an area to purchase poinsettias. It's on the back side. Fill that out. Drop your money in an envelope. Mark poinsettias in the offering basket later today. If you have any questions, please see Mary Ann Novak. We have so much to be thankful for and in prayer for which, in the bulletin, you can see a prayer window. Take a few moments, look it over, take it with you, and be in prayer this week. If you have any prayer requests, you can write them on the back of your connection card. If you don't want your request in the weekly prayer email, make sure you mark the box confidential. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful to be here today. We're, it's the best time of year, and we just have to, um, it's just nice joining together and um, remembering the birth of Jesus. And it's just a wonderful time of year, and we're thankful that we're able to be here in worship. Um, please let the message today speak to us so we can put it in our lives day in and day out. In your name, amen. Advent people, a people of hope. For us, Advent is a time of waiting, and so we wait. We wait for the coming of the one who is the fulfillment of God's promise, the fulfillment of hope, the declaration that we have been redeemed. Even so, we are not a naive people. We know that the world in which we live will continue to be filled with pain and sorrow. We know that hatred and violence will continue to exist. We know that death and separation will continue to be a part of our lives. But because we are an Advent people, we know that none of these things will win in the end. The Holy One is coming to make holy once again. All that was, is, and ever will be. Light the second candle as a symbol of our hope as we wait. And in our waiting and our hoping, we work and worship, pray and play, and in all things hoping that peace, love, and joy will reign in our lives and our world now and forever.
go ahead and have a seat. Well, this morning we're continuing our series. We're calling what it's really all about, uh, unwrapping the true meaning of Christmas. And so uh, last week I told you that each week we're going to be unwrapping a different gift that would help us to to understand the the true meaning of Christmas. And Ellie, could I get you to come up and help me unwrap the gift this morning? Come on up here. Now, you can't keep this. It's, you're just helping me unwrap it, okay? So can you dig in there and see what we've got? Dog bones. Well, what do you think this has to do with Christmas? You don't know. Well, go have a seat, and maybe we'll find out together. Uh, when, I was, uh, when I was growing up, we had a, a, a dog. We got it when I was in uh, probably kindergarten or first grade. His, his name was Sammy. And uh, Sammy was, um, you know, he was a part of the family after I went to, to high school, I, I, or after I got out of high school, I think even after I got out of college. But um, Sammy was a, was a dog that we had a lot of fun with. And, uh, you know, you could take a ball or a stick and throw it, and, and Sammy would go chase it and bring it back. But what he really enjoyed doing was we would go down and get a handful of grass and throw it up in the air, and he would, would jump up trying to, to bite at the grass and, and catch it. And we, we spent hours over the years having fun with, with Sammy, throwing grass in the air for, for him to, to try and catch. Now, you know, Sammy, we, we never sent him to, to obedience school, um, although I'm not sure whether obedience school is really about training the the pet or training the owner, but that, that's another story. Um, you know, he didn't really know a lot of tricks, but one of the things that, that we would do is we would take a treat, uh, take a, a, a dog biscuit, and we would put it on his nose. And we'd say, wait, wait, and, and you know, he, he would leave it right there, and, and you know, he would start to, to get anxious, or wait, you know, and, and we would, you know, have him have him wait, you know, sometimes, you know, he would begin to salivate and, and drool because he could, could just taste that, that treat in, in his mouth. And, and so finally, when we would say, okay, you know, then at, at that point, he would kind of dip his nose down and I, I don't know what he did, swirl around, but he, he would catch that uh, snack before it, it ever hit the ground. You know, waiting is often a, a term that we hear associated with Advent. You know, Advent is a season of preparation. We're preparing ourselves for, to, to celebrate Christmas. We're preparing our, ourselves for, for Christ's second coming. But another word associated with Advent is the word waiting. Now, Christmas is 15 days away. And for the, the children in the crowd or in your household, oh, 15 days just seems like an eternity. But for some of you, when I said 15 days, you may have felt a shot of adrenaline or panic because uh, 15 days is going to pass all too quickly for, for you. Well, there's a lot of waiting in the Christmas story. And uh, you know, as I think about some of those uh, situations of waiting in the Christmas story, the, the first one that I think about is uh, about Zachariah and Elizabeth. Zachariah was a priest. Elizabeth was, was his wife. And, and they were, are described as, as righteous. And, and uh, you know, Zachariah and Elizabeth was who Mary went to visit when the angel had visited her and told her that she had been, been chosen by God. Well, Zachariah and Elizabeth were, were described as righteous people, and yet there was something that was missing in their life. There was something that they had prayed for for years, but their prayer had never been answered. Maybe, maybe they had even stopped praying for it. And one day when Zechariah was, was in the temple doing, doing his priestly duties, an angel appeared to him and, and the angel said to, to Zechariah, your prayers have been answered. 
you and your wife, Elizabeth, are going to have a child. Even though they were, were old, even though they thought they were too old to, to ever have children, you know, God told them that, that they were going to have a baby. But uh, you know, it was an issue that they had prayed for it for years. They waited for a long time until God answered their prayers. You know, how about Mary? You know, she had a, a lot of waiting as well. An angel told her that she had found favor in God's eyes and, and that if she was willing, she was going to, uh, to bear God's son, that she was going to bring God's son in, into this world. You know, as Mary you know, you know, gave birth to, to Jesus and, and on that night in the stable and, and the shepherds came and the shepherds told Mary about how the angel had, had visited them in the in the field, and then how there was an angelic choir, and, and as they gave Mary all the, the details, the, the story tells us that, that uh, she, considered, she considered what they, they had to say, and then she, she pondered these things. She treasured these things in her heart and, and thought about them over time. You know, I'm sure there were a lot of things that Mary pondered about Jesus' life over the years. Even going back to, to that first angelic visitation and wondering what it all meant, what it meant for, for her to, to bear the Messiah. You know, she waited 30 years for his public ministry. She waited 33 years and, until he died. And all that time, I'm sure there was so much that she treasured in her heart, so much she pondered trying to figure out what does all this mean. In Luke chapter 2, there's a man by the name of Simeon. And Simeon went to the, the temple courts on a daily basis. You know, we don't know at what point in his life he got a message from God, but at some point in his life, God told him, Simeon, you will not die until you see God's Messiah. Until you see the Messiah that's promised to be sent into the world, you're not going to, to die. And so, so Simeon went to the, the temple courts daily expectantly looking forward to see the Messiah. But day after day, month after month, year after year, no Messiah. But on this day, when, when Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to be dedicated you know, in, in the temple, on that day, Simeon, as he held the baby in his hands, realized this is the Messiah. This is the one I've been, been waiting for. And as Simeon was holding the baby Jesus, he said to Mary, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that, that will be spoken against so that the, the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. How much Mary must have been encouraged to hear the testimony that, that, um, that this child that, that, that she bore was the Messiah, just like the, the angel said he would be. And yet also how troubling for, for Simeon to say to her, and a sword will pierce your own soul. Mary waited to, to hear, to experience, to understand what that meant. She waited 33 years. But when Jesus was crucified, I wonder if she didn't remember what Simeon had, had said that first time that they, they visited the temple. You know, it was an issue that there was so much waiting. It took time before God revealed, before they understood all of, of what was being revealed to them. You know, there's a lot of waiting in the Christmas story, but there's also a, a lot of waiting in the Bible. Uh, the last words recorded in the Old Testament, written by the, or spoken by the, the prophet Malachi, in Malachi chapter 4, the last two verses say, see, I will send a prophet Elijah to you before that great and dreadful day that the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the parents to the children and the hearts of the children to their parents, or else I will come and strike the land with, with total destruction. God through, speaks through the, the prophet Malachi, reminds him that he's sending a, a prophet that will be a, a forerunner of the Messiah, that he's sending the, the Messiah. God speaks, and then he's silent for 400 years. 400 years God didn't speak to, to, his, to, to his people. You know, God keeps his promises, 
But as he was silent for 400 years, they probably wondered, is God really going to do what he says? Is God going to come through? Is he really going to, to, to do what he promised to our, our ancestors? God keeps his promises, but the people waited. Listen to the, this morning scripture that, that talks about waiting. We, we find this passage in, in 2 Peter chapter 3, beginning with verse 8. Peter wrote, But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The, the elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives. As you look forward to the day that, of, of God and, and, and speed and speed its coming, that day will, will bring a, about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will, will melt in, in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. Our lives are bound by time. We are bound by, by schedules. There's things on, on your calendar. There are, are places that you're supposed to be at a certain time, probably even yet today. We are bound by, by time, but God is not bound by time. You know, we're, we're very conscious of the, the, the minutes, the, the hours, and the days, but, but Scripture tells us that with God, a day is it's like a thousand years, a thousand years is, is like a day. You know, for us, there's a big difference between a day and a thousand years, but because God's not constrained by time, you know, there doesn't seem to, to be any difference for him. When Jesus said that, that he was going to, to come, we want it to, to happen soon. But, you know, what's soon to us isn't necessarily soon to God. I was talking to someone this week who was, was kind of sharing with me all the things that were, she was stressed about and that she was dealing with, and then she started talking about the things that was, were going to happen at the end of December and, and end of the new year, and, and I just got wore out listening to all the things that, that she, um, she had on her plate or all the things that were, were coming, and, and as she was lamenting about, about all the challenges that she was facing, she said, unless... Jesus returns. And then she said, oh, come, Lord Jesus, come. You know, the Bible tells us that Jesus is going to return, and, and I believe that, that he's going to, to return. And, and some of us pray that, that when we're facing adversity, when we're facing tough times, we say, Lord Jesus, hurry up. Why don't you just come today so then I don't have to deal with, with all of the, this mess in my life? But in the face of de delay, does it mean that God is not keeping his promises? To some, the delay causes them to wonder if God, if Jesus will, will ever return. From our perspective, we may believe that God is, is slow, or, or sometimes we might even doubt if he's, he's going to act. But since God is not constrained by, by time, what we perceive as slowness is actually God's patience. So why is, is God, God patient? Well, Peter tells us that God is patient because he doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants everyone to come to repentance. He wants everyone to be in a right relationship with him so that when Jesus does return, that as many as possible will, will go to heaven with Jesus. God's slowness to act 
has nothing to do with God's inability. But it has everything to do with God giving his people the maximum time to, to make their lives right with him. Since Peter described God's desire for, for, um, for people's hearts and lives to be made right with him, is the reason that, that Jesus' re return has, has delayed. Uh, there are many, including myself, who believe that there's going to be some sort of a spiritual awakening before Jesus returns. The reason is that in a spiritual awakening, people turn their, their hearts to God. People repent of their sin. People's hearts are, are made right. And so if Jesus' return is delayed in order that more people might come to repentance, it, it would make sense that before his return, there, there would be a, a spiritual awakening. I want you to think about your own life right now. Is there an area of your life that, that God is showing you patience? Is there an area of your life where God is showing you grace? God is giving you time to, to grow, to change, to to repent? Is there something of which you need to repent and, and leave behind? Is, is there an area of your life that you need to turn your back on and, and walk in, in God's direction? You know, this time of, of waiting is a time to make an intentional investment in your spiritual life. Maybe it's a time for you to make an intentional investment in the spiritual life of, of your family. Is a time to stop dabbling and, and trying to act like a Christian when it's convenient and begin living like a follower of Jesus 24-7? Could it be that your very presence, even in worship today, is an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to be stirring in your heart and, and life and, and revealing to you something that you need to leave behind, something you need to turn your back on, something that you need to, to repent of? in order that, that your spiritual life might be renewed and you're ready whenever that time comes for, for Jesus to return. In my last church, there was a woman that started coming to church um, soon after her, her son had had a very serious accident. Fortunately, her, her son lived, but it, the, the outcome could have been very different. Well, as she started coming to church, yeah, she was... She was pretty rough around the edges. You know, she was kind of a, a crusty person to, to, to get to know. And, and whenever she came, she always sat in the very back of the sanctuary. And often as she sat back there, she, she would just cry. And over the course of weeks and, and months, you know, she began to, to deal with some issues in, in her life. You know, began to, to repent of, of some sin, to, to leave some things behind, and, and began to be transformed. And and the thing is, God met her right where she was. And as God met with her right where she was, and, and she began to, to change, there, there began to, to be a transformation. Now, over the, the course of a few weeks, a few months, Lisa began to move closer to the front of the sanctuary. Now, it was, was an issue that for Lisa, she thought that because she was in the back row, you know, um, she, she was trying to, to keep God at, at a distance. And the closer she got to God, the, the closer she would, would come to, to the front. And, um, you know, God was just as close to her in the back pew as, as when she moved up farther in the, the sanctuary. But, but eventually, uh, Lisa became a, a part of the, the worship team. You know, eventually she was up in front of the, the congregation leading worship because of the transformation that had happened in her heart and life. Now, when our hearts are transformed, it doesn't mean that we, we end up up in front of the church leading worship, but that, that's what happened to, to her. Is there an area in your life in which God is saying, okay, it's time to change. It's time to repent. It's, it's time to, to turn to me. Peter goes on to, to say that, that Jesus' return is going to come like a thief in the night. Now, as Peter uses that analogy, he doesn't use it because, 
because Jesus' return is something bad, like, like a thief going into your house, but he, he uses it as an analogy because you don't know when the thief's going to come. If you knew when the thief was going to come, then you might stay home. You might put in a security system. You might hire a, an armed guard. You, you might call the police. There's all sorts of things that you might do if you knew when the thief was going to come, but, but that's part of the... Of, um, the success of a thief is, is they come when you least expect it. And Peter's saying that's what will, is going to happen when, when Jesus returns. He's going to come when, when you least expect it. And so Peter tells us the, the way for us to be ready is that, that we should, should uh, make ourselves ready by, by living holy and godly lives. We should always be ready so that when Jesus comes, it, it won't catch us by surprise or that we won't miss it. It's been said that there are some people who are so heavenly minded that they're of no earthly good. There are some people who spend so much time waiting on Jesus to return that they don't do anything to make a positive difference in the world in, in which we live. Have you ever heard the, the whole old saying that a, a watched pot never boils? You know, what, it, what it's saying is if you, if you put a, a pot of water on the, on the stove and you stand there watching, waiting for it to, to boil, it seems like it will never boil. But if you go about doing something else and come back, it's amazing how quickly that water will boil. Now, the water boils just as fast or just as slow whether you're standing there or not. But when you occupy yourself in another way, it seems that, that the water boils more, more quickly. While we're waiting for Jesus' return, it's a time for us to live holy and godly lives. Remember Simeon, the one I told you about in, in the temple that when, when Mary and Joseph brought the, the baby and he recognized them as, recognized this baby as the Messiah, the one that he had been waiting for. You know, for however many years, Simeon had gone to the temple courts expecting to, to meet the, the, the Messiah. I don't believe that he just sat on a bench thinking, well, I wonder if today is going to be the day. I wonder if he, I don't think that he just passively sat around, but, but I think that every day, he went in anticipation that maybe today is when I'm going to see the Messiah. And so he would walk around the, the temple courts as, as men and women were bringing their babies to dedicate them to, to God. And, and maybe he, he would say, can I hold that baby? And not that he ever said to another baby that, that you are the chosen Messiah. He never spoke the same words to any other baby that he spoke to Jesus. But I'm wondering if he didn't hold the babies and if he didn't say a prayer of blessing upon that baby and, and upon the, those families. I wonder how many lives Simeon blessed, encouraged, made a difference in while he was waiting for the coming of, of the Messiah. When we're actively doing God's work, the waiting doesn't seem to, to be as long. Peter urges his readers, Peter urges us to make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with God while we are waiting. Invest yourself in, in God's business. Invest yourself in God's purposes. And as you do, you won't be caught off guard when, when Jesus returns. Because as you invest yourself in God's purposes, as you live as God's children, whenever Jesus, is, Jesus returns, you will be ready to meet him. You'll not find yourself unprepared, but you'll be ready to, to meet Jesus whenever that day comes. You know, our memory verse this week comes from, from uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse, verse 9. It says, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as, as some understand slowness, but he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. I want to give you a, a couple next steps this week. First of all, 
I will seek to lead a more holy and godly life this week by blank. What is it that, as you've sat here this morning, that the Holy Spirit is, has been stirring in you, the Holy Spirit has been prompting you, saying, this is what you need to leave behind. This is what you need to, to repent of. This is what you need to turn your back on and, and go in, in a different direction. Whatever that is that, that you've sensed the Holy Spirit stirring within you this morning, then that is the thing that... Uh, that you can leave behind, that is the thing that, that you can do that will lead you to a more holy and, and godly life in this week. Or secondly, I will be more patient with situations that frustrate me and give God room to work on me and to work on others. You know, if God, if Jesus' return is because of God's patience, wanting to, to give us time to repent, wanting to give us time to grow, wanting to give us time to, to change. Might our patience with others possibly be a catalyst to bring about a change in them? You know, actually, our patience with others probably does more to, to change them than our impatience with them. So, so this week, you know, try to be more patient with situations that frustrate you and, and give God room to work both in you and, and in that, that other person. Waiting is part of God's plan. He doesn't want you to, to passively wait, but he wants you to actively wait. During the time of waiting, he wants you to become more like Jesus. In the time of waiting, he wants you to be the hands and feet of Jesus in the world in which we live. Let us pray. Lord, as waiting is, is a part of this Advent season, I pray that, uh, that we don't passively wait for, for you to act in our lives or in situations and circumstances that we can do something about. But Lord, I, I pray that, um, that in our waiting, you might help us to be active, active in, in being your hands and feet, active in, in growing in holiness and in the ways of godliness. Lord, I pray that, that our waiting during this season of Advent is, is not a, an issue of simply being busy, but I pray that our waiting during the season of Advent might be a time of spiritual transformation for each of us. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. As um, <clears throat> we prepare for our offering, Grant talked about the, your connection card. Hope you'll pull that out. And, uh, and as the offering plates are passed here and offering baskets are passed, passed in just a few moments, hope that you will put that, uh, that connection card in there. If you're a first-time guest with us today, um, welcome. We're, we're glad that you've chosen to, to join us. On your way out, please stop by the starting point as we have a gift that we want to, to give you there. Also, as we think about our offering, there's, there's a couple things I want to highlight today. Uh, during the, the season, there, there's a lot of ways that you can uh, can share in the community and also in the, the church community that make a difference in the lives of others. One of the things that we do every year is, is something called the wise man tree. And actually the wise man tree is loaded, located in the parlor. And, and what people do is they, they give money and put it on the wise man tree in honor or memory of someone. But, but what we use that money on the wise man tree for is, is to help those in the, the life of our congregation who may have an emergency need throughout the year. You know, just recently, a, a couple ways that we've helped was, was someone had a, a medication that they needed and, and they didn't have the money to buy it at that point. So we helped them with the wise man tree uh, account. There, there was someone that had uh, an electrical problem in their home that, that was kind of a, an emergency and needed to be fixed, but they, they couldn't afford it. And so we helped them with, through the wise man tree. That's what the body of Christ should be doing is, is helping 
one another when, when we're in a, a crisis. So as you give to or designate something for the wise man tree, that's the fund that goes in and, and we help others in, in the life of the church. Also, a, a ministry of the church that I want to share with you in the way of a celebration is yesterday right here in Connection Court, there was a, the Little Elves Workshop. And the first time we'd ever done that, we didn't know how many were going to show up, but there were over 50 children that, that showed up. And with, uh, with most of those children, there was at least um, one adult, and in, in some cases, there were three or four adults, the parents and grandparents coming to, to be a part of that activity. And we figured that uh, there was over 50%, maybe even 60 to 70% of the children participating in that Little Elves workshop yesterday are not regularly a part of, of our congregation. So just a, another way in which we're trying to reach beyond our walls and, and share with, with children and families the message of Jesus. So as we prepare to receive our, our morning offering, uh, let, let's pray together. Lord, may you bless what we give as we offer ourselves in worship, as we offer ourselves in, in service, as we offer our tithes and offerings, I pray that you would bless the, what we give and may it make a difference by, by empowering and, and equipping the, the ministries and, and outreach of, of this church. May you bless what we give in order that it would make a difference for your kingdom. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Friendship Connection will be celebrating Jesus' birth with our annual birthday party for baby Jesus tonight at 5 p.m. They will also be rehearsing for their Christmas musical, which is next Sunday, December 16th at 3 p.m. They will have a rehearsal on Saturday the 15th in the afternoon. See Sarah Kaysen for details. Revolution, our junior high group, will meet from 5 to 6.30 and 6.48. Our senior high group will meet at 6.45 to head to the high school for the band and choir's Christmas program. Soup for, the, soup for the Soul is Tuesday. Sign up to serve or come for fellowship. Please check the bulletin for other upcoming announcements and events. It's been a great day. We're glad you all came here today. We'll either see you next week right here back at The Current at 11 or our more traditional service, The Classic, at 930. Would everybody please stand and sing one more time. <laughs>